and welcome to our TED Talk. Welcome to our TED Talk. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Dragon Lord and Big Texas Goat here again on a Wednesday. The camera's way over here. I'm just... You gotta, you gotta have the first five minutes for technical difficulties. We know how it goes. Look <laughs> at that. Our background, over here. our background like, isn't working. Let's fix that real quick. <laughs> I was like locked into my other monitor as if the <laughs> the webcam was above it, and then I saw the the stream go live, and I'm like, oh, I'm staring at the side of my head. There we go. I fixed it. It's gonna be crazy for a second, but it'll stop. I need to just move this over here. Episode twenty three, ladies and gentlemen almost reach a quarter almost we can almost do our laundry with how many episodes <laughs> can almost play one video game one video game in the 90s yeah i mean hey you, right now you can do a claw machine at dave and buster's for a quarter you, you can you can do you can do one pull on the coin pusher where you know wherever <laughs> so i mean the, the only so, thing at dave and buster's that's a quarter is the uh, it's like a fundraising machine. Well, I mean, like, like there's, Pac-Man. there's, there's like the little fairs that like show up to the mall and shit. They have coin pushers. That's real money. You They'll said put they like, investors. well, the claw machine. Claw machine's no. a quarter. No, I mean, not. well, if, if 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 we're really, yeah, I was gonna say, if we're really gonna get into it, yeah, it's all a swipe these days. But okay. Well, no, the local Dave Buster's they have it actually has a quarter machine. Oh you know, no it's shit! Like Pac-Man and Donkey Kong. And all, and all the money goes into a charity. I want to say it's you know something for kids or something. But right. It's a little like you can like see the box on the side of the machine that the money drops into, so you get one actual quarter play, and it goes to a charity. But it's only like Pac Man and Donkey Kong. Hmm. Well, either way, so, yeah. episode twenty three. Yeah, machines, even those are like a dollar. Episode twenty three. Yeah. So, if you want to you know, start off with the news, you'll notice the printer behind me to my right is not moving because I'm about to set it on fire. But the resin printer? No, no, the regular printer. Oh, that left of the resin printer. Oh boy! You know, remember when we'd printing nonstop, waiting, uh, pending the flea market? Well, I had the the hot end issue that we discussed a little last week, I think, or mm-hmm. it was the week before, but. Replaced the hot end because it you know, finally got burnt out. Or no, I replaced it and then the replacement was leaking out of the top of it and I replaced that one. That's what we discussed last week. So, so I'd already replaced the hot end twice and I put the new one on there and printed a few things. I then tried to do the trick of like melting two pieces of filament together. Right. Because I was halfway through a print but was about to run out of material. Mm-hmm. So I tried to fuse it and shave it down, and it ended up fucking being still too thick and got stuck in the the Bowden tubing and snap, snapped off of the other roll. So like ended up just failing that print like halfway through, like five hours of printing gone. <laughs> and I, I was like, I was, I was like, fuck me. So then I dug out the remaining old filament and fed it back in there and. Well, then the fucking bed stopped heating up. And this printer, which, you know, long before our talk show, had problems with the bed heating cable that plugs into the control box. Uh, for those that don't know, this, a lot of the older models use, like, aviation cabling. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like a four-prong screw-on adapter type cable fitting. And... The factory one had like burnt out and like melted the plastic around it. So I replaced it, but it was kind of ghetto. I soldered in the wires to it and then just kind of electrical taped around it. And so it doesn't actually screw on anymore. It just slides in. The screw on part isn't there. Right. But it's been working like that for like a year and a half. Just fine. (laughs) Like looks ghetto, works just fine. Until... Like I said, all it did was, like, replace the filament and then go to start making a print. It wouldn't heat up anymore. I'm like, dang it, man. Like, I was like, all right, I was determined, like, I just need to completely redo that wiring and do it right this time. So I I take the whole control box apart and realized why I didn't do it right last time because there's, like, I'd have to literally take apart, like, 30 wires to be able to do it. 
and some of them are small, some of them are big, and it's just like, man, like I am not a soldering expert when it comes to <laughs> small wires like this, like automotive soldering, sure. Yeah. But this kind of soldering, it's not my thing. It's tough. Yeah, I have specialized <laughs> soldering irons for like oh, small. I do job, too, like and that. I still suck it. I bought a whole kit when I did that wire. That's the only reason I was able to solder it, but. Uh, so I was like, ah, I just really don't feel like messing with that. I was like, it, it looked like one of the pins is just loose. So I adjusted the pin, cleaned it all off, put it back on, hit start, boom, it's heating up again. I'm like, okay, okay, must have just been that weird pin. So printed an entire. <laughs> Show off the new piece of print. Print off an entire AA battery holder. Nice. So you store batteries in the top and they just roll down to the bottom. Came out really nice. I was actually impressed. It almost seemed like the cleaning and stuff I did and getting that wire on there properly almost made it print better. Yeah. So this one finishes. I immediately, you know, peel it off, put new glue on. I'm like, all right, boom, let's make another one. Bed's not heating up again. Like, Damn it, Jim. <laughs> what the <laughs> shit? So I sat there and I'm like, Fiddled around with the wire and the cable and just can't get it to heat back up anymore. I'm like, I don't know. Like, so I guess I need to take apart my whole shitty soldering job and see if the solder came loose or something. Yeah. But point is, now my printer's dead too. Uh, that brings us to our, our newfound 3D printing friend. Yeah, so... Yeah. I actually have a picture up right now. I'll announce this one. For those of you who may not know, we have a mascot. Uh, it's actually two. Oh, that's not two. What I, meant. <laughs> um, I mean, he did design it. Yeah. Well, we have we have we have two mascots. Uh, Buford Black, which is our pirate, and Blue, his alien pet dog. And uh, for a long time now, we've had the idea of you know being able to three D print this pet Blue. Um, which has kind of been more of a more of a mascot than than Buford Black has been. Uh, Is his name Blue? Yeah, we remember. decided on Blue. I remember this. B L E U Blue. Buford Black and Blue. Hmm. Um, but we have a 3D model now, so we'll be 3D printing him shortly. Uh, shout out well, to we don't our. We don't have it just yet. Well, yeah. we don't have it just yet, but it's in the progress. I'm pull, throwing up a picture right now. Boom! There he is. Very you nice. Got the, you got the original to share for what he had uh, to work with? I would have to find it. I'll send it to you. Yeah, send it to me. And then go ahead and send me a picture of uh, Buford Black as well. But yeah, so we have a, a 3D rendering now of the, the cute little monster himself. Um, thanks and shout out to our friends over at KBL Creations. Uh, for hooking us up with a really good uh, a really good deal on on designing this model for us, uh, we can't thank y'all enough. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty exciting. Uh, pictures of of Blue and Buford Black incoming here shortly. Yeah, copy and paste didn't want to work. What are we doing? Snap. There we go. Of course, I got to view it, and it's got all these like, do you want to? Test out this tool or this tool or this tool. No, <laughs> yeah. I just want to see the picture. I just want to look at it. There we go. There it is. There's the OG. <laughs> Which I'd have to look up who created these for us here several years ago, but it was another. It was a, a Fiverr or Fiverr artist that did these for us. So we, uh, you know, completely own the rights to both of these. Uh, guys Buford and Blue yeah. and then we're we're also going to own the rights to the, the Blue 3D model of course yep. so there we go that's what he had to work off of but if you didn't know there's our mascot Mr. Buford Black and Blue themselves it's Buford Regulator Black Buford Regulator Black and his pet alien Blue yeah, I think it was with the rum ship you got that uh somewhere <laughs> I thought about putting it in the background, actually. Uh, I have one. I was trying to find like a better one. No. 
Oh, well, I mean, it's also on our background page. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so whenever you see us before we go live, that's the rum ship. I do have the 3D printer. So there we go. There's the rum ship. But we also, uh, <laughs> for all intents and purposes, own the rights to that as well. But it's kind of an under the table agreement. Nothing yeah. like on paper. The guy that uh, repurposed a ship to make design this ship, you know, told me online that, yeah, I can do whatever I want with it and use it for our business and everything, our organization. So. But it's not an actual like licensed picture, unlike their other two. But but we do have the consent of the artist to use this image to whatever means we want. But yeah, that's the that's the original rum ship that the rum gaming community was created off of. Yeah. And then once we turned into the nonprofit organization, we uh, hired an artist to do Buford and Blue, and then. Just recently, we hired KBL to turn blue into a 3D model because the long-term goal is to take that 3D model and get our, a mold made out of it that we can melt our 3D filament scraps into yeah. to make custom little and, rum pets. And another cool thing we could do with it is I could take my excess resin from the dice making and just pour it into the mold every time. Yeah. And then eventually it'll be a full mold and it'll be a bunch of different colors and patterns and all kinds of wickedness. It'll be kind of cool looking. It'll be weird, but hey, you know, yeah. recycle, reuse, <laughs> right? Yeah. Repurpose. Right. So, uh, yeah. So same point as the KBO is a local 3d printing group used to be in houston now they're in bartlesville which is a crazy coincidence since we're both in both places mm -hmm. uh they're a they're the whole shebang though like they have a 3d printing farm he does 3d modeling he does 3d printer repair like everything dude knows his shit and they only started it was like june 2022 yeah. started off pretty much just like we are but they wanted to make a business out of it mm -hmm. he started off with one printer that he made a trade for off of an old video card with his uncle yeah one printer because he was curious designed his own his first custom model and then everybody wanted that model mm -hmm. and then it just blew up from there now the dude has like 24 printers both resin and fdm and has a whole business going and he's booming it's yeah. crazy yeah. Crazy to think, you know, like with, with enough initiative, how much you can do with 3D printing. But you also have to have space. I mean, I sure as heck don't have room for 24 printers yeah, in this no, house. Neither, I, neither do it'd I. Be like a, it'd be like a furnace in here yeah. if I put 24 <laughs> printers on the wall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it's funny though, because he also does 3D printer repair, and I'm over here. Like, either I need to figure out if it's hopefully just a solder cam off or something, or I might have to reach out to him again and commission him to fix our dang printer. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm still trying to get stocked up for the event coming up, and I got a down printer. Can't have a down printer right now. Yeah. The event is, how? what, you got only a couple of weeks, couple of weeks left now, huh? Yeah, right around two weeks. So, yeah. Well, almost two weeks. So this Saturday will be two weeks. It's October 14th. No, it's my birthday. Dewey, Oklahoma. My if anybody birthday. wants to come up here, cough, cough, wink, wink. Yeah, I don't think that'll be happening. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> I really don't because we got a uh, we got a, a new closing date on our home, and it's supposed to be the seventeenth of October, but it could it's very well time. it could very well move up. <laughs> yeah. Nah, I just thought I'd joke at you like that like hey, it's our first event we're all gonna be there right yeah no nope, i'm not that's my birthday got shit to do. <laughs> speaking of which that's what's funny the, the wife and kid are gonna be off for my birthday but i'm not most <laughs> likely not Love i that. might take it off too but Love that. but we're but we are going to dallas on that 21st so another event y'all can catch uh, half of rum gaming at is what was it 
Fan Festival? Fan Fest. Dallas Fan Fest. Yeah. Dallas Fan, yeah. So the Dallas Fan Fest, that's October, the weekend of October 21st. I believe it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but we're just going to be there the 21st. If you want to hang out with the, the goat family. Yep, yep. Uh, otherwise, rum gaming news. I think that's about it. Yeah. I'm still that's just still waiting to take printing orders, even though that printer's down, we can still do resin printing. So, you know, don't feel, don't hesitate to put in an order with us. Or if you're a veteran, sign up for your free print. Uh, any other news from your end? I assume your half of the endeavors are on hold until you finish moving. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. The dice making is 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 on hold. Making the three D printer is on hold. Uh, yeah. Packing is in full. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about the other day. I was like, "Hey, you should just let me video chat with you." But then I'm like, "Well, you're going to be packing it up and moving, and then it might yeah. get all out of whack yeah. again." Yeah. Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to keep it in one piece. I don't want to disassemble it to move it. Well, I meant just. Even just vibrating to go across yeah. town. You know, I mean. Well, we're, the nice thing is we're not going across town. Our house, we actually timed it on multiple trips. It's only five minutes away. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're still, I'm saying you're still driving. Like, yeah. You would we, still ideally like the printer to be in its permanent spot and then try and yeah, yeah, 100%, and get it all situated. 100%. We're actually, I'm actually considering doing, uh, you know, those pods where they drop off like a yeah. shipping container. Yeah. I found out it's, it's like, it's like 250 bucks and you get it for the whole month so like they can drop it in the driveway and we could pack it over like you know a week and then they could come pick it up drop it in the driveway of our new house and we've got the rest of the month to unpack it <laughs> you know as long as everything fits in one body yeah. well yeah that was my problem we were i estimated that because i was contemplating for a while but like what it would cost to move back to texas and we or we i did my you know crazy researching because i love researching everything so i looked up like all the different moving companies versus using pods and i actually had a combination of like paying for a moving company to come and pack my house into the pods for me and it would be cheaper to do that no, that would be a, to pay for a moving service. That's something I hadn't thought about. I'd hire somebody to pack up the house and load it into the pod. Oh, dude, the next time we move, I ain't packing. I'm paying somebody. I'll save for it. Like, I'm. I've reached that age. So will they? And, will they like? They'll like put shit into boxes and everything. Like yeah, they'll pack up everything. The, the only problem I have with doing something like that is because we're living with somebody else, so we would have to be there to like direct them what to take and what not to take. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty easy, too. You could always just rope off areas or something. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, that the next time we move, I'm paying for a moving service. I'm I'm never moving on my own again unless I just absolutely have to. Yeah. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to budget that in to our yeah. next move. I don't think uh, <laughs> I don't I don't think we're going to do the, the the packing service this time, but I'm I'm, I'm very heavily considering doing the pod. Yeah, this is definitely convenient. The moving services are pretty expensive. You're talking like a thousand dollars. Well, I mean, the nice thing is, is we have we have the luxury of even if we like close on the house and get the keys, we don't like have to move in that day. You know, it's not yeah. like I mean, you can the, just slowly do it one truck at a time. So. Yeah, yeah. Like it, we're five minutes down the road, so it's not like I'm driving across town every time. You know, I've got access to trailers. You know, and yeah, and, and, I was about and to say and you know somebody with a trailer. Yeah, and like this where we're at right now isn't going anywhere anytime soon so if we need to stay here another week while we're still you know packing everything up or whatever and our house is getting set up then so be it <laughs> you know yeah it's not a big deal i mean that's what i would do especially in your situation i wouldn't yeah. even bother spending the money on the pods i would just do it one truck and trailer load at well, a time well the only reason i want to do the pods is because i envision like packing the pod in like a day or two and then like slowly unpacking it <laughs> if that makes yeah. any sense i guess the the benefit of the truck and trailer though is you don't necessarily have to pack you could basically pack and unpack as you go like just have several tubs you just fill some tubs bring them to the house unpack them go back fill up some more tubs like you don't necessarily have to like pack the whole house you just 
kind of do like one room at a time. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. We're we're probably still gonna pack the whole house. So. That's what that's what we've done. The last two moves that we've done in town here, we we just do one car load at a time, just back and forth, back and forth. Well, what we may do is we may get a smaller pod and fill the pod with just boxes things that we can box up and then use a trailer for like the furniture and the beds and the mattresses and the desks yeah you know because that's just going to take up all of the fucking space in the pod it's like well i would rather the stuff be in boxes like that we box up that may or may not be fragile going in the pod where i can and i know it'll at least be somewhat protected yeah well speaking of things costing money i get on to our topic here yeah let's do it let's do it so to catch people up the last few weeks we've had uh discussions about finances you know general cost of living how tall of a financial ladder do you want to climb as far as you know are you fine with making thirty thousand dollars a year 90 or two hundred thousand a year is your goal a million you know just where is the top of your ladder and why and then we also compared the 80s to 2023 cost of living Mm -hmm. and what was last week's discussion last week we compared our different our different bills and incomes yeah different Uh, income to outgoing ratio which was you know surprisingly you know roughly about the same yeah texas oklahoma and alaska you know minus the actual like house cost of living yeah yeah uh and gas i still can't believe that adam's gas like that i almost feel well like i mean he's off. also he's also trying to put, put gas in all of his toys and shit too that he's got you know motorcycle yeah, but, four-wheelers but eight hundred dollars a month like holy cow <laughs> hey i still can't get over that one uh yeah and then before that we had peter as a guest just kind of talking about you know general finances i don't think we we even touched a topic that one yeah we kind of just rambled on learned a little bit about real estate and whatnot yeah yeah and then Uh, we had we had scriv on for another episode where we talked i think it was just about settling you know was he on the settling stream he was either on the settling stream or he was on the uh I don't know. I can't remember which one you're yeah. on, but we, 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 we've been on this particular topic for a good amount of time now. Yeah. And to the point that this one may or may not be the last one, depending on whether we can get through everything. Uh, but today we wanted to talk about where would your, like, not necessarily the top of the ladder, but what's a good top of the ladder to be at? where you were living a like pretty cush pretty comfortable loose life you know nothing crazy you're not driving lamborghinis and eating at hell's kitchen every friday night right you know but uh sorry i was trying to get the stream pulled up on hey. another device and post Big that scope the 60 month so how I proposed the question was if some wealthy benefactor was to give you a monthly allotment to let you live this cush, comfortable life, but not extravagant life. And the only stipulation is you have to keep working your normal 40 hour job, putting forth the hundred and ten, you know, hundred, hundred 110% effort at your job or the allotments will stop. And this has to be your normal job, like the same progression you would make if you weren't getting this yeah money, it's not know? like you're gonna take you know three hundred thousand dollars a year and go get a job flipping burgers at mcdonald's like no, or less you're or not gonna less. be the librarian or the yeah you know the walmart door greeter yeah. or something you know you gotta actually put for the normal job per se quote unquote normal <laughs> uh, and somebody will make up the difference from your job to whatever your cap is that would let you live this comfortable lifestyle. Yeah. And this is the combined household income, though. So we're trying to determine what would that be? Yeah. And we briefly discussed that or you know, brought it up several times throughout these streams about 
I feel like there is a cap where you stop increasing your quality of life. You know, you know for those of us that, you know, started off poor or middle class and advanced our way up, you know, we, you can always look at food items. You know, we started off eating ramen, spaghetti, and complete meals. And, yeah. You know, bread sandwiches. Yeah. Well, bread I meant to bring that up. It was a TikTok about just three pieces of bread. Yeah. Bread make sandwich. a bread sandwich. Yeah. No, I mean, I remember I remember getting like ranch dressing and saltine. That was like a snack. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, when your snacks are whatever scraps you have in the house yeah, instead of like an actual bag of chips. Shred, shredded <laughs> cheese and some tortilla chips. <laughs> Microwave yeah. them. There's nachos. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so for those of us, you know, we, we can gauge it by food. You know, we go from that to actually having hamburger helper to actually having pork chops and steak and sides and to, you know, maybe you're eating out a little bit more. You yeah. Know, your, your food margin keeps going up and up and up <clears throat> as well as you know your your toys and things like that you know you i've personally have gone from budget computers that can barely play my games to a full-blown gaming mpc with dual monitors yep. and you know so on and so on and so you know certain lifestyle things have increased but others haven't uh, there's certain things that i'm just content with uh, to the point that i feel like there is a pretty low cap for me personally that i could live a nice comfortable life and i have to worry about much yeah but not but not be crazy whereas you and peter are more along the sides of like now the more i make just the more i'm gonna spend basically yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna keep going up i'm gonna be only eating filet mignon wagyu beef (laughs) <laughs> never touch hamburger helper yeah, again I, mean, I think uh, i'm gonna hire a personal chef no fuck that i want to cook my own food i just want to use the <laughs> nicest ingredients man yeah. no i mean it's weird because could i in the job that i'm at right now with the combined household income that we're at right now uh slightly change my lifestyle i could probably live comfortably but I'm just not wired that way. Like even what, what, what I'm making the most money I've ever made in my entire life right now. And I still don't feel like I'm making nearly enough for what I want. Yeah. Yeah. And that it's like you said though, it's because like you just said, you know, you're a little too loose with your money. If you tighten things up, you'd be fine, but you want to not have to tighten up. You yeah. Continue to be loose and have extra money. <laughs> Yeah, I want I want to be able to I want to be able to swipe my card and not really worry about if it's gonna go through or not. <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I never have to worry about it. All the way bad. up, all the way, all <laughs> the way up until the day before I get paid again. Like, <laughs> you know, like, I I, I want to be able to get worry about that. I, I want to be able to get paid again and still have like a thousand dollars in the bank. <laughs> so. You, and that's the thing. So because we do run a pretty tight ship, we are at that point right now. Yeah. So whenever I don't have my goddamn house falling apart or some other crazy, stupid scenario going on, we are at that point. We kind of have a floating either several hundred all the way up to a thousand, you know, depending on what we've been doing. So I have a nice bubble that I try and keep in yeah. the checking account for that reason because like i said i do i enjoy that feeling of not having to worry about it if we just want to go eat out one more time this week we just go do it i don't have to think about whether i can afford it yeah. because i keep that bubble if we go to you know we talked about on one of the other streams about grocery shopping that like you can't just go and buy an entire several hundred dollars of groceries at one time yeah and i do frequently like we'll, we'll just decide hey you want to go to sam's club and we'll go to sam we literally will make up excuses to go to sam's club just so we can go eat at canes chicken fingers by <laughs> raising canes so like we'll be like hey you know what? we can use paper towels Fuck it. Let's <laughs> drive 30 minutes to go get paper towels just so we can eat canes chicken fingers so we'll go out of our way to spend money to eat out and go to Sam's Club, and then you have that mentality when you're in Sam's Club, 
of like, well, fuck it, we're here. We might as well stock up on yeah. beef yeah. and all this. You know, we'll go in there with. Oh, look, the briskets are really great price. Let me buy two yeah. of these. <laughs> so like, we drop anywhere between one hundred and three hundred dollars every time we go to Sam's Club, and we go there like twice a month. And I never have to budget that in. Yeah, I just go and spend it and. I'm never worried about, oh, are we spending 100 or 200 or 300 this time? I don't care. I just, we just buy, put the shit we need in the cart, we go buy it. Yeah. Uh, now, granted, I'm still always watching the prices, but we still put whatever we need in the cart. Yeah. And we buy it. I never have to worry about it until crazy shit like my bathroom falling apart and my roof falling apart or breaking a window. Yeah. Or, yeah. You know. yeah. And I, I mean, I fully recognize that I, I, we could probably be do that too. No, not probably. We could. We could absolutely do that too. It's just, I, I don't know. I, I guess. I guess I'm just shit with money. I, I don't know what to what to say about it. Like, I just, I don't know. I, I, I have things that I want. Shelby has things that she wants. I'm the kind of person that, as as selfish as I can be in some aspects, I'm very generous in a lot of things. Shelby never has to want for anything. She's the hardest person. Like she's like she's like Tina in that aspect. She's the hardest person to shop for because she gets everything that she wants. If she wants something, she gets it. If we have to budget for it and save for it, we save for it. Like we well, see that's that's where my budgeting comes in. All the things that are wants, you know, outside the grocery store, we plan for those. Like, yeah. And that's where me being, and that's, I'd love to have a discussion about this. We might actually have another financial stream, but the difference in our household is we have one combined income and I control yeah. it all. Yeah, that's the big difference. So, so every purchase that we make, Crystal gets all the kinds of shit she wants. She gets to buy books and book stuff and hobbies and just all kinds of shit. You know, just burning whatever she wants. But, I monitor it all. So she kind of buys whatever she wants without, she doesn't like ask me for everything she wants to buy. Yeah. But I, but I monitor the spending. Yeah. And when I realize like, Hey, you've, you know, you're approaching like two or $300 for the month. Maybe you need to wait till next month. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, I just monitor it and advise basically. So she gets to buy whatever she wants and I monitor it to make sure he's not going crazy. And, she tries to monitor herself, you know, to be like, hey, you know, again, that's just that kind of self-control, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Where it's like, well, I've already spent two hundred dollars really. Let's or this month, let's wait till next month and then I'll buy some more shit. Yeah, I mean I think I think a lot of where my particular financial strain, because I mean that's an interesting point that we hadn't really touched on at all, is the 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 the, the huge difference between the way both of our finances are handled. Y'all are joint. Me and Shelby, our money is separate. We don't have a joint bank account, and we don't plan to have a joint bank account. But <laughs> I think where the financial strain for me comes from is I have the mentality is like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm the husband. I have to provide. Like it's my responsibility to put food on the table and pay the bills. So I pay all the bills. Uh, when we go grocery shopping, she'll pay sometimes. I'll pay sometimes, but. In the, in I mean, the, in the, but in the also real... the difference is you basically have two incomes right now. Well, so. yeah, 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 but, but like, her income goes to pay like just her specific bills, like her car note and her student loans and whatever other things that she might have, like the credit card or whatever. But yeah. I pay for her insurance, pay for her phone, I pay for our internet, I pay for our electric, I'm going to pay our mortgage, like. I'm going to be taking care of all the bills. So my bank account always seems to look light. And so it freaks me out, but I, you know, I don't, cause, cause I don't ever really consider her income as like part of the equation. Yeah. Right. So realistically, most of her income is semi disposable that I just, I don't even like think of. <laughs> well, <laughs> which is a good thing, also... which is, which is a good thing because she does, she's really good at, at managing her money and so she's the one that maintains like the savings and, and things like that so whatever excess that she can spare she puts into a savings account whereas i can just spend my money <laughs> you know <laughs> well it's 
<laughs> kind of what I was getting at. That's also the difference. Whereas when you have split incomes, you look at it as like, well, this is my spare money. I yeah. can spend it all on me if I want to. Yeah. Whereas with us, it's the family's money, and I have to yeah. split it evenly between me, the wife, the pets, kid, you know, yeah. house, I you mean, know, everything. I mean, the the fact the. Th don't get me wrong we definitely share funds like you can check shelby and i's like facebook message and you can see that we are constantly bouncing money back and forth between each other from facebook pay like it, <laughs> it is constant like hey babe i need like 20 bucks for lunch today hey babe i need like you know i'm going to the store can you send me like 50 bucks for some of these groceries or hey i'm you know we're ordering dinner do you want to pitch in on this like it, there's definitely money transfer going on constant well, yeah but i'm talking about for things like you want to buy some pop dolls like that's your money i'm assuming you're not asking her for money to buy shit for just you oh yeah no 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 yeah that's what i'm saying like there is no just my money it's, yeah it's just everybody's so i have to take it all into account yeah no i mean I, I i definitely see the benefits of having a joint account like because you can you can place a singular the person that's better with money kind of in charge of it right and things can get better but i'm i really enjoy the freedom like yeah i don't well, have to ask to both i don't have to ask mm. shelby if i can spend my money she doesn't have to ask me if she wants to spend hers like i give her shit all the time she'll go out with her friend and i shit you not every time they go out and hang out together she comes home with a bunch of shit and it's <laughs> like and, and, and I, I, you know, I, I bust her chops about it and give her shit about it all the time. Of course, I never mean it, but it's like, man, how come every time you go out with her, you got to come back with a bunch of shit? Do you really think you need to be spending that money right now? It's like, but it was, it was on sale and it was only twenty dollars. It's like, yeah, it was twenty dollars, but you've hung out with her four times this week. That's fucking eighty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's all a joke. I don't ever mean it, you know. But it's, it's funny. I enjoy the freedom of, you know, it's your money. You spend it however the fuck you want. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not. I may be your husband, but I'm not the one that's going to tell you what you can and can't do with your money. You know? Yeah. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, ups and downs to it, but, but that's something I'd like us to discuss on another stream. I'd like us to actually like come up with a list of the positive and negatives that, that we hey, each see from each part. Maybe we can get the wives involved. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I definitely like to get their perspective because yeah, imagine, you know, Crystal's perspective is just sit back and not worry about it because shit's paid. And, you know. Yeah. But yeah, and, and then also we can try and get Mudslide involved on this too because he's also a split. Yeah. Like you guys are. Yeah. But his is a little bit more unique. So I'd love to. Yeah. Me and him have talked about this for years, like ten years now, if I heard longer. <laughs> We've been talking about split income versus together income, and it's. It's very interesting, and like me and Crystal had plenty of discussions about it, where we discussed the ups and downs, and it's just for us, you know, and part of it, you know, probably on both sides. The reason you don't think you'll ever have a joint account is the same reason I don't think we'll ever have separate ones, because we've just we've learned to adapt to this. Yeah, yeah. So why change? Yeah. Uh, I I, I have, however, considered putting together a joint account. Yeah, like a As shared account. A shared savings account. That way we can both dump money into it. Yeah. You know, uh, and, you know, maybe get like a shared account for, you know, if we have a kid that we can start, you know, splitting some of our savings money and putting it into this bank account. And then when they turn, you know, 15, 17 or whatever, we can give them their debit card and be like, hey, look, your account's loaded with money. We're going to yeah. teach you the value of it. Let's see how long you can make this last. Yeah. And until you get a job, we're going to put a monthly stipend in there. And, you know, because that was one of the things that, 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 like, I really, that really sucked in high school for me. And I, I wouldn't want my kids to go through it. But, like, when I was in band, we would have, like, after school practice. And in between, like, school ending and practice starting, there was, like, a good, like, 30, 45 minutes. And so, a lot of us in band, we would, you know, we would leave the school, we would walk to the Sonic, you know, down the street, 
and you know get something to eat and it's like all my friends always had money because their parents would give them money so that they you know they'd go eat at sonic and they'd get food and i'm just sitting there in the corner with my friends just you know watching people eat just starving and it just sucked you know and it just it yeah. just sucked it's like man so i'd like to i'd like to do something like that you know set up just a in a, a an account and just you know load it with money I mean, and see what they can you know see what see what i can teach them with it you know technically that's what an allowance is for too well but, yeah you know. but if, if you can have a bank account why not yeah it just depends on the age and stuff i mean yeah yeah, yeah. There's a lot more factors to that. I mean, you'd have to find a way to make it where they can't spend more than the next amount of day or, you know, just crazy shit like that. But anyway. Hey, Gert, no problem, buddy. Be safe. All right. So, get back on topic. So, we'll, we'll save the split versus joint discussion for another day, possibly next week. Uh, the side cut questions that I have for our current one of, you know, your push life or at first i guess we didn't spit out the numbers what was your number or did you have a number assuming that we kept the same jobs we have now i would like to be making a grand total of let's say 175,000. so we would need we would need a stipend of let's see we I make mean, we make really have to do the math but we we, we make we make about 80 right now so you know you do the math split the difference yeah well i'm just i mean as far as what the stipend would be it doesn't really matter it's just what is your yeah your annual I would, income i would say i would be. say about one hundred seventy-five thousand a year and that would be comfortable mine's a little less and it's really hard to put into factor, which is why I get these side questions, because depending on how you answer these other questions will determine, make you potentially reevaluate what your cap is and maybe even reevaluate your current spending habits. <laughs> but uh, mine, I would say, honestly, probably like 150, maybe even less to live a nice, cushy life. Because of like I said, we're almost at that point now. Yeah. The only thing that sucks now is like anytime something like, you know, car needs another thousand, any, any big like thousand plus dollar purchase that has to be made all of a sudden. Yeah. Sucks. <laughs> like, well, yeah. I mean, let me let me preface my answer with with saying, like, I don't. At that kind of income, I don't think our. I don't think our standard of living would change too much. We'd still kind of, I, 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 I certainly wouldn't, you know, go out and buy a new different house and a new car or anything like that. I, you know, keep doing things the way that I am now, but I would want that extra money to be able to build up a cushion that I just, that we just don't have. Yeah. You know, and I honestly thought about putting that into the stipulation where it's like, you're also not, <clears throat> trying to set a number that's going to give you a million dollar savings account when you retire you know? yeah no <laughs> no so this is like yeah technically i could live the same life i'm living now make mine one hundred seventy-five thousand, and no i mean a hundred thousand into savings every we year. would we would definitely we would definitely <laughs> spend spend some money uh we would have we would have all, a lot of the same things but they would be nicer right yeah. like my computer would be more upgraded her computer would be equivalent to mine instead of you know a step down all the time you know uh um yeah uh, that's one way i looked at it too where it's like as far as we'd like have I'm bigger fine TVs. with a lot of the things <laughs> i have but i wouldn't mind having them upgraded yeah we'd have bigger <laughs> tvs we'd have you know our dogs would be eating better food you know, like I don't think your dogs can eat better food. Yeah, you? that's true. We we feed it. We we I, I really do I really do make an effort to to have our dogs eat as good, if not maybe even better than we do. Sometimes. I was gonna say, unless you switch to like the raw diet or something. So, like, I, I consider I've considered very very heavily over the past few months of like buying the food that you like actually have to cook. 
It's yeah. like in a tu- like a, in like a you know hamburger tube that you just like cut off a portion and you cook it in the pan and then you feed it to them. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like it's I've considered it, but that, that's a little out of my price range. But you know, if yeah. I was making one hundred seventy five a year, absolutely, one hundred percent. Yeah, you know. Um, well, mine. I yeah, I probably just do with one hundred fifty. That's a nice round number. That's going to let me make a lot of changes over time. You know, like you said, slowly start upgrading things. I yeah. upgrade my desk, I'll upgrade the computers, I'll upgrade the appliances. Now, mm-hmm. so, you know, when I do go to buy tires for the car, I won't look for the super cheapest, best deal. I'll just yeah. buy some nice quality yeah. <laughs> tires. Yeah, I uh, can actually buy good tires. Yeah. I can actually get my oil changes on time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> See, you laughed at me when I said that. It's a fucking but, it's, but it starts Listen, sinking if in. I, if I can, <laughs> it's funny you said that. And like for like the entire night after that, I was like, "Son of a bitch!" Now that I realize it, I've never gotten my oil change when the sticker said I was supposed to. I've always gotten it when the light came on. <laughs> Wow, I'm not waiting that long. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> it served me good so far. My, you know, knock on wood, my car runs just as good as the uh, day I bought it, and it's okay. been such a great vehicle. But that's beside the point. But yeah. <laughs> so, the side questions here. So one is, what are things we were kind of talking about this now? But what are things that stand out as living a push life but not extravagant and i think that's you know what we were kind of brushing on you know we're not gonna have a five thousand dollar computer but it's always gonna be capable of running everything on maximum graphics yeah yeah i mean i i think my my idea of cushy is you know my pantry always having fresh food my fridge always stocked with whatever I don't have to like go to the grocery store the day of or the night before to like put food together for a meal plan. Like I can just buy a bunch of shit at the store that I think I might cook and then cook it throughout the week. Like, and not have to worry about how much that costs. I mean, to me, that's normal. (laughs) (laughs) To me, that's Uh, Kush. (laughs) To me, Kush is what we were talking about, about making those upgrades. Yeah. Currently, we, we settle or we buy the lesser of the you know like the tires for example like i don't buy the cheapest tires but i can't just go in there and be like give me the top of the give line, me the pirellis mile <laughs> throw the yeah. pirellis on there yeah like, i'm looking <laughs> i'm looking at sales i'm yeah. comparing stores yeah i'm like I'm, all right which I'm store which reviews. store has the buy three get like, one free deal let's yeah, go yeah. <laughs> yeah buy three get one free it's one step above budget tire yeah you know like to me, like that would be cush. I can go in there and be like, you know what? Just give me four brand new Michelins. Go. Yeah. Whatever you recommend. Run flats. Got them. Yeah. Run flats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, same thing with you know, like the oil change. Even oil changes. You know, to a. I mean, that's a minor one. But full right synthetic. Now, I, well, yeah, I do do full synthetic, but I, I buy it off of Amazon. So uh-huh. I buy the five gallon or not five gallon, the five quart jug, and I buy. Uh, top of the line ish like specifically high mileage full synthetic filter as well yeah. and then i bring it to a shop and just pay them to do it for me yeah so i still pay like 60 dollars for oil change but i'm getting better oil and a better filter put on yeah for probably cheaper than what they do with the charge machine well it's the same price in the uh, end. You, hey man I i'll just... tell you what i'll tell you what i found a place i found a place here in town it's one of those like quick lube places where like they have the pit, so you just drive into the bay. Yeah. It's like 65 bucks, and I sit in my car. They change my oil, and I'm like, all right, you're good to go, and I drive off. <laughs> like, yeah. I love that shit. <laughs> it takes like 20 minutes, and my oil's changed. Done. Yeah. If I could still bring my own, that'd be nice, too. Yeah. But, you probably could. Uh, maybe. Not a lot of people do, though. Like, some of them look at it as like a liability and shit. Well, yeah. I mean, I, if that's the case, I've got a mom and pop shop that does really, really great work. Yeah. Right down, the, like literally two minutes from the house. Like, I walk there. <laughs> but yeah. Those guys are great. They'll do anything. So, I think, you know, we're pretty much on the same page there as far as, you know, upgrading things in our house that we've either 
like I think I briefly described about our desk. You know, we're like, I've been riding these desks out because there's nothing actually wrong with them. But they are older. They have a lot of wear and tear. Yeah. You know, but they yeah. still function. Yeah. So because they function, I'm not upgrading them. Yeah. But if I was making the 150, I'd be like, you know what? Let's get some let's get some new desk. Yeah. But like again, if, if I'm, I'm not gonna go buy a thousand dollar electronic raising yeah. up and down. No, like if I'm desk if or... I if I'm making one seventy five, I'm gonna find a desk that a, that I'm gonna you know, I would I would design my office to have an aesthetic that I would like and build the you know the furniture to match it so you know if i have to spend a little extra money on the the you know the specific wood color of desk that i want then so be it you know i've got the money <laughs> now i'm just buying like the cheapest gaming desk that fits <laughs> my needs that i can find on amazon you know <laughs> yeah well, it's just little things like that that i think the you know, the, the quality of product that you buy would change as well as you might not ride it till it breaks or in your case yeah. you might not wait till the dang oil light comes on before yeah. you get your fucking oil yeah. change it's like, like the I, worst I mechanic ever i would still have i would still have the the same shit it would just be better versions of it <laughs> yeah and you might not ride it till it dies yeah exactly <laughs> so like and another like minor example for us at least like we have one of those stove or ovens that's built into the wall okay and, the one that's in our house is the one that was put there like when this house was built in 1990. Mm -hmm. So it's old. The little clock and timers on it don't even work anymore. But the oven works. And once since I've been here, I've had to replace the healing element on it. But it is an old, you know, I don't know how many years is that? Almost 40 years old. So yeah. like 37 year old oven that the dials don't even work on. So it's like, you know, I feel like if I was making that nice cush money, that'd be one of my cush changes, you know, to just finally get an upgraded version of that oven. Yeah. You know, little things like that. Or things, you know, I might look for less sales than I currently do. <laughs> like, yeah. Like our current refrigerator I got because it was somebody had bought it and paid for Lowe's to deliver it, and the delivery people damaged it with like a scratch like a couple scratches on the refrigerator so the guy refused it and got a new one mm -hmm. so then they put the one with scratches back on the floor for a discount and then like, give me that I went one in there. <laughs> yeah and i went in there and like you know me i'm researching everything i cross-reference other mer versions and models and sales going on at like home depots and stuff and i went to the manager and i was like look i know you're trying to get rid of this fridge how about you get rid of it for this much yeah <laughs> like hustled the guy down to even cheaper than what he had it listed for yeah and it's like yeah i got this brand new top of the line samsung refrigerator and it's got a couple scratches on it so what but i look at it like it's gonna get scratches eventually anyway yeah and it's <laughs> like the, a couple of scratches on it doesn't affect the function of the fucking refrigerator yeah. But if I'm making 175000 it's like, you know what? I'm going to get a new fridge. <laughs> so you yeah, got a scratch exactly. on it. I don't like I'm, it. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not looking for the scratch fridge. If I'm <laughs> matter of fact, matter of fact, give me the one that's got the touch screen on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can upgrade your life yeah. instead of looking for the scratched and dented refrigerator. Yeah. Like, to me, that's the cush life. Is no longer looking for the dented product. <laughs> You're getting that. No longer going Top to the, the discount thing. shelf. Yeah. Uh, but now, speaking of some of these lower points, that's my the other side topic, is what are some low points financially that you've been at, that you've been in that moment, dealing with that situation, whatever it is, and you thought to yourself, like, man, you know, I really hope I don't have to continue to do this thing or live this way for much longer like or you know i can't wait until we're not doing this yeah i mean um that wasn't that actually wasn't uh that long ago for me Good night. hey tell her i said happy birthday by the way I hey, this birthday. stranger on the screen says happy birthday It's not my birthday, but thanks. Jeez. Well, she's gone. 
All right, we scared her off good. But yeah, no, I mean that moment actually wasn't too long ago for us. It was about about three years ago now. Just say thank you. <laughs> How old is she now? 11, 15, 12? 15. Good night, Grace. So anyway, you said recently. That yeah, wasn't, recently. Was about just recently. Yeah, about three years ago. Um, no, well, that's three years ago. Th- th- to me, that's kind. Of, that's, that's pretty recent. But uh, yeah, I mean, we were we were me and Shelby and I were living in the apartment. It was um, <clears throat> just at the end of COVID. Um, I didn't really have a job. We were living off of my BAH from me going to school. Like that was how bad it was. Like I had to go. I felt like I had to go to school to like pay bills yeah uh so i you know i, I you know I, I picked something that i you know i figured would make me some good money in the future not necessarily something that i was like super into and really wanted to do but i was like you know what this is a really advantageous field to go into let me learn as much as i can about it and so you know it was it was kind of a win-win you know it helped pay the bills and i learned a new skill out of it but it's like man if it hadn't have been for that we may not have been able to pay for the apartment and then yeah. you know thank god for you know her dad letting us you know move into the house and you know the circumstances that allowed that uh the the, the, the stars just kind of aligned at that point you know um and really really pulled us out of a bad spot um but yeah i mean it, it, to, to look back on it from like where we are now it's it's pretty insane it's it's really crazy like i this whole house hunting thing is really kind of uh, put into perspective because, like, when we got the apartment, I thought the, I thought the, the you know the rent for the apartment was going to be a lot and hard to swallow, and <laughs> it, it wasn't at first. It was it was okay, and then I you know because I, I was I was making decent money and you know and then COVID hit and that all went away and it was like, God, that's so hard. This is so hard, so much. And now yeah. you know looking at what my mortgage payment is probably going to be, it's like. Fuck, that's easy. I could do that all day. <laughs> yeah, we can not get fired, huh? Yeah. Yeah, no kidding, right? Better not be another COVID. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess you'd be fine because you're working from home. I am working from home. That's right. And the nice thing about my industry is is most of the my, my company would be able to work remotely. They did. They worked all through COVID. Uh, well, for me, we've had several points you know but i've also been around 10 years longer than you yeah so the the well me personally i guess if you want to go really back which i didn't even think about that when i was writing these questions down until just now so going really back to just me i I I guess just me as far as having to support myself i mean me and crystal were still together but we were dating at the time like for about six months I lived in my car while we we're prepping to get married. <laughs> like it's kind of a funny and sad story. So like for the six months prior to our wedding day, I was living in my car while she was living at her parents' house. No. I mean I was working at Walgreens and living in my car. Like all the way up until we got married and then I went got stationed in Germany for my active duty years. Yeah. But you know, it's I mean, it's funny because I, I see people that, like, live in buses and, like, you know, their car and shit. And it's, like, part of me is, like, man, if I was single again, I might consider investing in, like, you know. Like a van. A, yeah, like a, like a <laughs> van. Because, like, I see all these people, like, on TikTok and YouTube that are living in their vans and their cars. And they're, like, always traveling and going to, like, these yeah. really exotic places. It's like, man, if I was living in a fucking van, like, yeah, I can see that. Because your cost of living is so fucking low at that point. You can yeah. spend all of your money on traveling and doing just crazy shit. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't cra- It wasn't anything like that when I was living in my car. Yeah. No, I was living in my car because I couldn't afford anything. Yeah. And- yeah. I was, I was literally like heating up cans of ravioli on the defroster for dinner. Like, I mean, but you I couldn't have gone to fucking you couldn't have gone to Walmart and bought a hot plate for twenty bucks. Twenty dollars? Oh, 
You mean like to cook in the yeah. fucking car? No. I wasn't doing anything crazy like that. But that was also back when like Subway would have like buy one sub, get one free. So yeah, like they still do that every, every time they did that. Oh yeah. And eat those for like three meals straight. Yeah. It's funny, uh, I I watched a TikTok of this uh it's it's uh he's an Asian guy. I believe he's Japanese, but I don't know for sure. Uh, and he's like a truck driver. And his TikTok videos are nothing but him like eating his meals in his truck between loads. <laughs> and the kind of shit that he cooks in his truck is insane. There's another guy that like cooks like super fancy meals in his dorm room. Like he made he did a video where he made a beef Wellington in his dorm room. <laughs> and Gordon Ramsay like reviewed it and was like that's one of the best beef wellingtons I've ever seen anybody make. And this kid made it on a fucking hot plate in his dorm room with a toaster oven. Like, <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> you gotta want it. Yeah. It's like, yeah, man, you can, you, can, you can cook fucking anything if you're, you know, good enough. Yeah. Uh, moving forward from there was in Germany. Uh the last year there kind of sucked because in Germany, which and I'm pretty sure I want to say Adam or Mudslide has this too, but they use heating oil for their heating, not like the standard HVAC systems that we use. Mm -hmm. And so in the basement is literally like 300 gallons of heating oil in big tanks. And when you move into a house, like a rental house, they have you draw a line where the oil currently is. And when you move out, you got to make sure it's filled back up to that point. All right. And this being our first experience where we're dealing with heating oil, you they walk me down to the, or us down to the basement and they're like, here's the heating oil tanks. You need to draw a line here and you know, initial it. And I'm like, oh, okay. This is like 300 gallons of heating oil. And I'm like, that's going <laughs> to last forever. Well, it doesn't. Yeah. So we're in the middle of freaking winter and woke up freezing because the heat oil ran out. <laughs> so it's like, gone. And so we had to pay to get it filled. And it was like, and at the time, you know, I was making, it was just my single military income, which wasn't a lot. And I want to say it was something crazy, like a thousand something dollars or something to have this filled up. Yeah, we had no extra money in those days. <laughs> so yeah. Was like, uh, I don't even remember what I did. I think we had to like get a loan or something. So it was like every little bit of our extra money was just going to paying that loan back. Yeah. And from that day forward, we like shut all the doors in the house and turned the heaters off because it's little, almost like the the little like water heaters you see in some older houses or buildings where you have to. Yeah go and turn the knob on the heater in each individual room. Yeah. That's how it works there. So we just shut all the rooms, and shut all the heaters off in the rooms that we weren't using. But we basically spent the next like 12 months being dirt poor <laughs> because of heating oil. Yeah. Uh, that was, you know, a silly, shitty lesson to learn. Yeah. That was also part of the reason why we had to get rid of our pets before we moved to Hawaii. So we had two cats and a dog. And then going to Hawaii, they have a quarantine, mandatory quarantine of 30 days. Unless you get this certain shot or test done prior to coming there. And then you can, you know, <coughs> so like in theory, in Germany, we could like got this shot 30 days prior to going. And then just have our pet tested at the end of it. Yeah. And been fine. But if you go to Hawaii with a pet that hasn't had that shot, they have to get the shot and then sit in quarantine at a kennel for 30 days. Right. So we were going to have to pay for the shipping of our three pets, plus this test, plus 30 days of kenneling for three pets. And there was just no way we could afford it. We just spent the last year living yeah. paycheck to paycheck because of the heating oil. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, by the way, you need to pay for kenneling for three months. Or for three pets for 30 days <laughs> yeah it's which like, is i can tell you from experience it's expensive. yeah <laughs> so that was you know that was kind of the end of that shitty point in our lives we spent a year living paycheck to paycheck and then had to 
find new homes for all three of our pets we've had for the last three years. Yeah, that's rough. This is the kick you when you down, right? Yeah, basically. Uh, and then you know, fast forward again, like ten more years, get out of the military, move to Houston, start working at Sears. Sears went to shit, and then we move up to Bartlesville. We're moving up here, we started off at like the bottom of the bottom. We're living on like a slumlord, nine hundred square foot house with bugs. Like we literally had to bomb the place before we could move in. Yeah, <laughs> like lived there for a year, and like that entire year was just stacking living in this money. like it was what stacking money. No, no, <laughs> like, oh, shit. we lived there. That was me, like, bouncing around from one bullshit, like, $9 an hour job to another. Well, the, the wife was... I don't remember what she was doing. I think she was working at the casino at the time. So she was doing, like, four in the morning shift work at the casino. Yeah. I'm doing these bullshit, like, 8 $9 an hour jobs here and there. We're living in this bug-infested fucking shithole with window units and... A, a central heater it's like a heater in the middle of the house that's supposed to heat the entire house <laughs> and you know that's you know going back to those times of like living off of nothing but complete meals and spaghetti and yeah. bread sandwiches like that was that was our life for a year just garbage <laughs> but it was it was all we could do while we were getting our life started up here yeah and like that's where I look at as our starting point, you know, because that's where we went from that to, you know, fast forward 10 years. And now, you know, combined, we've doubled our income since we started and yeah. doubled our house square footage and quality of house. Yeah. I mean, Shelby's Shelby's income has been exponentially increasing throughout the years. Uh, she gets like two or three raises a year. Um, me, on the other hand, I have... I've doubled my income in the last three years. More than. So that's that, that's that's a pretty interesting thing to think about. It took it, it was it was a, what like a ten year process for you. Yeah. And it was yeah it was like a, a three year process for me. <laughs> well, I mean more 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 like more so like a year and a half because I was making I was I was making almost double at my my previous job. And then now that I have this one, I'm making even more than that. Yeah. And mine could have been similar, but so the flip side of our household versus yours was you had Shelby with the steady, never going to change job. She's yeah. going to work there for the rest of her life. Yeah. Well, you had the ability to bounce around. Yeah. And from our perspective, it was the opposite where I was working at DSR for a long period as that's the guaranteed check while the wife was, you know, getting training and trying out different places. And like the yeah. wife was moving up and up and up like you were more rapidly than I was. I just got to DSR and settled for eight years. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely have to, have to, I have to throw a big shout out to Shelby for that. Cause she's, she's held it down all these years. <laughs> you know? yeah. And that's what's happened with us in the last three years. The, the wife got on, with the the help desk that she's at and you know, she's been done nothing but move up and up and up and she's settled and stable and gonna be probably with this company until we both retire now yeah because now i'm working there also yeah so once she was in a stable position then i started bouncing around and i went to the post office and back to dsr and now i'm at her company and now we feel like we're both at our you know permanent career location yeah um, I don't know, man. I the idea of working at a pl at a singular place for you know ten years just doesn't seem something <laughs> feasible to me. Like yeah. I love this job. I, I I loved my last job. I could definitely I could have seen myself doing this job and my last job for a very extended amount of time. But you know, time and time again, I say that and, you know, a year, year and a half, happens. yeah, year, <laughs> year and a half down the road, I'm off to something different, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I, I don't know what that is. Maybe it's just because I'm, I'm the kind of person that strives to be a jack of all trades, master of none, <laughs> you know, 
I want to oh, constantly, I'm constantly, you know, wanting to learn new things and, and try different stuff and, 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 and do different things and have all these different skills in my back pocket, you know? Yeah, but it's, I feel like it's more played into the things that weren't in your control. Like, like you were happy as shit at the guitar place and then COVID happened. Yeah. And then uh, yeah. you were happy as shit at the, your last job, but then shit just kept getting more and more out of hand and it yeah. almost like forced you out of that place. Yeah. Like, had things, you know, had COVID not happened, fuck, you might still be selling guitars and running the store right now. Yeah. I, I, had I, I, the, your the last funny company thing... not had all kinds of foolery going on you might have been the owner in a couple of years yeah i mean i i know i know for a fact because someone told me but it had covid not happened i would have i would have ended up the customer service manager at that guitar center um that's what i'm saying i mean because of environment you know things out of your control i think were the biggest play but because of your willingness to adapt you kept using those as opportunities like like well, that didn't pan out. Let's try a new avenue. Yeah, it's yeah, not like I mean, you said. True. Like, well, let me go find another guitar place. Yeah, you that's said, true. Fuck it. Let's change routes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, I did. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of had that that mindset about Guitar Center. It's like, could I have gone back to that Guitar Center after you know things settled down and you know got a job back? Probably. But when I lost it, you know, originally, and you know, told that I that you know they they weren't going to be able to have me back. It's just. I was like, okay, well, let's try something else. Let's just, I've yeah, been there, done like you, that. Let's do something different yeah, now. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You weren't just trying to stay in the same industry. Yeah. And you yeah. know, I mean, without without that decision, I wouldn't be where I am now. You know, doing what I am, what I'm doing now. I mean, I was I was gifted with this position because of my decisions that I made in COVID. You know, getting that IT school and you know, just so happening to have the experience and the knowledge that this team needed, you know, uh, to, to be better. Uh, yeah. And it feels a lot like the way that it did when I first started at my last job, you know, I feel like my, my input and my experience and my knowledge is valuable. Um, and that's a nice feeling. (laughs) Well, we can touch on that after the stream, but I have, both a nice and terrible feeling because of that in my current job. <laughs> so, well, the shortest group, just to not leave everybody hanging, is um, I've only been at this position for two months now, and probably on almost a daily basis, I feel like there's at least anywhere between one hour of the day and four hours of the day that I honestly don't even know what the hell I'm doing. Yeah. And yet, I'm being asked to train people in like two weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, my superiors have overwhelming confidence in me, but me on a daily basis, I'm like, "What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing?" Well, you know, I, I have, I think, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I kind of have that a lot too. Um, but that's the great thing about the, you know, my manager and my team, like. I'll give you a perfect example. Um, this past couple of weeks, we've had an issue with, um, like, we we have multiple different teams and departments that use the same ticket system. And so when a user sends a ticket, um, they can send a ticket that will require action from a couple of different departments, right? Mine included. Yeah. And so we were having an issue where we would have these multiple different departments involved in a ticket and responses to one department wasn't being seen because it wasn't going to their tick, their, you know, section of the ticketing system. It was only going to the other one. And one of the reasons why they put me into the position was to solve that issue and to fix these problems and to automate things in this system that they didn't have the in-house knowledge to do before, because I came to the table you know, telling them, Hey, I know this system really well. I can help y'all make this more efficient. And they leaned on that. And now we're having this issue and I'm pulling my hair out trying to fix it and I can't <laughs> fix it. Right. Well, that's and a so, little different well, but, when, but, well, when you have a problem me, you can't figure out. Right. But let me finish. Right. So 
there ends up being an email being shot out from my manager to my boss's boss, which is the guy who, you know, invited me to the position to begin with saying like, look, this is messed up. Like we need to figure something out. Like you can't just keep sitting on this. <laughs> and it made me nervous. So I, I just straight up messaged my manager. I was like, Hey, you know, I just want to let you know, you know, I'm, uh, there's a lot of variables here that I'm, I, 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 I have not been given the access to see and 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 do what i need to do to troubleshoot this issue and quite frankly i'm a little frustrated because of that and i feel like i'm being seen as incompetent or i don't know as much as i say i do and i don't want that to be the case <laughs> you know and she was yeah. like no 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 that's not an issue at all like we don't see it that way at all we just we understand that you don't have everything that you need and we can't give you everything that you need so we need to figure this out and I'm like, okay, I just want you to know, like, I'm not, <laughs> you know, I'm not telling you I can do things that I can't do. It's just, I don't have the resources, you know, like if I had the resources, I could easily fix the problem. I just, I, I don't have the resources. Well, it's, it's kind of the similar boat I am in. I just haven't, the problem is I'm not being asked to fix it. Yeah. It's well, that's... the problem in my boat is I see there's a problem. They know there's a problem. I've said Hey, y'all know this is a problem, right? And they're like, yep. <laughs> and I'm like, so, so are you going to fix it? <laughs> it's like, I'm just stuck in that awkward moment where I'm like, uh, this is a problem. Nobody seems to really give a shit. Like, yeah, I mean, that's mostly it's my, it's my efficiency problem where like, I can't stand things not being efficient yeah and they have a lot of things that just the senior technicians know how to do it it's just auto and it's and it's not documented anywhere yeah or <laughs> they have no problem just forwarding it on to somebody else or another team like passing the buck basically yeah and the problem is again with the efficiency i know the turnaround rate of those other teams of how long it's going to take them to get to it and because of which, I'm like, well, if we just figured it out, I wouldn't have to forward it to somebody else to figure it out. We could just fix the damn problem. So, yeah. you know, from the from the customer service perspective and efficiency perspective, it drives me crazy because it's kind of like you were saying, I don't have the access to the things to figure out the solution myself. Yeah. My only position is just to forward it to the people that can, but the people that can are so far behind, it's not getting done. Yeah. And I'm like, it's one of the things that um, it makes me not want to train anybody because if I'm training anybody that's like me and wants answers to every question, I'm going to be like, I don't know. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I definitely, I definitely am a big fan of the, the organization like behind how my department is run. Like for the first time in a long time i have a job where my expectations are very precisely and very clearly laid out in front of me like i can go pull up a document right now that tells me exactly what i'm expected to do on a day-to-day -day basis right i mean i and, can do that too and but there's just no instructions of how to do right it. but well <laughs> but that's the nice thing right because if there are and this is one really cool thing. If there, are, if there's ever an issue that comes across my desk, right, that I don't know how to solve, that I got to forward to tier two, I can ask that question to my boss. Like, hey, we actually have a meeting every single Monday, where throughout the week I write down tickets that I have questions about that I had to forward off that I couldn't solve myself. And during that Monday meeting, we talk about those, and I learn how to solve those issues. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have things similar to that too. Um, I guess the struggle is like, I don't know. It, it's always that fine line of not wanting to make yourself look incompetent, yeah. but, but wanting to have the answers as well. Yeah. And I'm also a strong advocate just for myself. I don't really suggest other people do it, but I'd like to try and figure things out on my own. Yeah. And so like, I keep thinking to myself like, oh, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out, you know, because I'm still in that point, in my opinion, even though it's been two months, that everything's still kind of new. Yeah. 
I would rather become the subject matter expert and then come up with solutions for the next person coming in to not have to struggle as much as I do. Yeah. And I would rather try and figure it out instead of getting somebody to tell me so then I can turn around and then get it fixed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of scares me about uh, about my position right now is um, them bringing me onto the team uh, was resulted in a complete like restructure of the team. So they they brought me in and decided that it was best that we that they you know completely overall how the team works and so instead of all of the you know all of the the admins you know doing all of the tickets now it's a level based system you know you have level one support you have level two and then you have you know people that do other things outside of that um, yeah. and that wasn't a thing until they put me on the team so now it's to a point where it's like okay once I get all of this level one stuff completely down pat and solid, they're probably going to want me to write a manual. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that scares me. <laughs> it's funny as I look forward to that. Well, I, listen, I've done it before, right? I, I wrote, I wrote like four of the seven manuals that were used in my last job. Like I'm, I'm no stranger to writing manuals. It's just, it's a fucking pain in the ass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, real quick, before we get too far off our sidetrack there, I do have four questions on us to try and cover so we can fully encompass our topic today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are more <laughs> questions that can pertain to now, to make you think about now the things you might not have thought about that I think about on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. uh, and also to put into perspective that money cap again of like what would be your your cush cap so one for example the one that, that we think about constantly is we like drinking soda mm -hmm. and we all three of us in the house have at least one soda a day sometimes two a day just depending on the day right the problem with that is if all of us are having one a day well that's practically well if we had two a day we'll say two a day if we had two a day that's one 12 pack of sodas a week per person. Right. So we're going through, you know, somewhere between two and three 12 packs of soda a week. Well, recently, and like recently, you know, in the last one to two years, soda prices, the standard price has gone from like $4 a case to $9 a case. Right. For a 12 pack of soda. And so as far as those, you know, making those budgeting decisions to make sure I have those extra floating dollars, we only buy soda when it's on sale. I was and doing that used, for a while. And it used to be, like, there was like three or four places to get decent sales at, like three 12-packs for $9, and then mm. it went to three for 10, three for 11, three for 12, 13. Yeah. Like, it just keeps going up and up and up as the prices go up and up and up. And so it's like now we almost exclusively buy our soda from the Dollar General because yeah. they still have three for 13. Yeah. Whereas like the best thing the grocery store offers me is like three for 15 or three for 16. Or they try and get you with like buy two, get one free. But when they're $9 a piece, that's yeah. three for 18. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, it's it's funny because I was doing that for a long time too. Except we would buy, we would buy. I don't give a fuck what anybody says, but we would buy Kroger brand because Kroger brand was always on sale and it was Ooh. always cheaper. And Kroger See, brand the difference. tastes you have just like the regular. It doesn't matter. They taste exactly the fucking same. <laughs> well, two stipulations of that. One, we don't have things like Kroger and H E B. Yeah, here. fair. So. That doesn't mean there's not off brands. There yeah. are. Uh, we have what's called best choice, but the best choice brand at the moment only has one zero product. Yeah. They have zero cola. Yeah. And that's it. So yeah. I have no other sugar free <laughs> options. <laughs> Kroger's got a sugar free option of every single flavor they offer. Yeah. Grape, orange, so like vanilla, fucking whatever you want. They got a sugar free version of it. 
So my next option would be Walmart, which they have the great value. Is it great value? Well, I was thinking, of, I don't know if it actually said great value on the sodas, but you know they have like the Doctor Thunder. Yeah, the Doctor. Yeah, the Mister K or whatever the fuck. Yeah, but I don't know if it's actually uh, best value brand, but or great value brand. <clears throat> But anyway, yeah, you have those options too. But again, there's no zero options. I'm not, there's no zero Dr. Thunder. There's no zero Dr. Lightning or whatever the Mountain yeah. Dew is. Yeah. You know, again, there's no zero options. So for our household that exclusively drinks zero sodas, I have to get name brand zero sodas. Man, I'll tell and, you what, I'll tell you what I've been doing recently. And it's just, it saved us a good chunk of change. Um, I've been buying, like, every couple of weeks, I'll buy, like, you know, a bottle of water, a big bottle of Avion, right? Because I like good water. Every once in a while, I'll spend a couple of extra dollars on the nice water. But I'll keep the bottle, and I'll fill it up, and then I'll use, like, the the little water bottle packets, like, flavor packets. Yeah. And you can get those in fucking any flavor. Like, Sunkiss makes a flavor. It tastes just like fucking soda, except it's not fizzy. Yeah, and, and, like, we do that, too. And I, we, I drink, I drink almost exclusively that. We've gone through phases where we buy like the Mio's, you know, we we'll buy like six yeah. different Mio flavors. We also have a, is there a two or three gallon uh, spigot pitcher in yeah. the fridge? Yeah. And we'll make, you know, three gallons of Crystal Light lemonade and all yeah. those different flavors. I mean, like we do that get... too, but we also like to have soda. So. Yeah. And so the question there is, you know, at what point, are you not looking for sales on soda? At what point do you just, you know, on your regular grocery trip outing, you just grab your sodas, whatever <laughs> the fuck price they are? Yeah, I mean, I, I pretty much stopped drinking soda just because of how expensive it started to get. Um, I mean, honestly, we're <laughs> we're kind of at that point. Like, at the moment, Dollar General is the only one that's well, keeping it lower. That that's why I started doing the little flavor water things anyway because you can go to Dollar General and they they have the entire like boxes for like a buck a pop. pop. Yeah. You could go in there, you buy like fucking, you know, six boxes. You've got drinks for fucking you know, two weeks. <laughs> you know, and you could pick yeah. whatever flavors you want. <laughs> they got like the Sonic Ocean Water, which is fantastic by the way. <laughs> Yeah, we probably do need to get more into that. Like I said, we kind of stopped, and we pretty much only do that big picture. We stopped doing the individual things, but we probably need to get back into that. Yeah, I mean, Dollar General sells, like, those, those like, flavored carbonated waters that, I don't know if you remember, but Granny used to drink them all the time. Like the, I mean, you know, the little bottles, not quite a two liter, like a, yeah. you know. I know. We buy those, too. Yeah, I fucking love those, man. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Yeah, we buy them from, like, Walmart and whatnot. But no, I mean, I made a conscious decision. I was like, you know, even even if it's zero sugar, soda still really isn't that great for you. And it's expensive. Like, why don't I just drink water? Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put some flavoring in it, but at the end of the day, I'm drinking water. Yeah, I mean, you're still drinking water with the zero sodas. <laughs> it's well, 99% water. Yeah, but if you but if you drink nothing but soda you're not going to be hydrated properly <laughs> it's just yeah, a fact the carbonation comes into effect. it's just a fact but again like i said we typically have like one with dinner and yeah. like me and the wife because we're working from home we'll have like one with lunch yeah so me and the wife are having two a day the kids are having one a day and then on weekends we might have two or three but yeah like we're not exclusively drinking soda but we are going through a decent amount yeah i mean like Dude, I gotta give I gotta give props to uh the um my father in law Jay. He uh I I've I've maybe seen him drink water twice since I've known him. <laughs> uh the, the, he drinks exclusively Diet Coke out of like a styrofoam, like big styrofoam gas station cup. Like that's kind of his thing. Like if he, anytime you see him, he's holding that damn cup and it's full of diet Coke every time. <laughs> That's pretty much all he drinks is diet Coke. Yeah, it's see, like, dude, I, I could, I, I, don't, I don't know how you do it. Yeah. <laughs> Even me, like, like we keep two to three, 12 packs of soda in the fridge at a time. I could drink it nonstop. Yeah. But I just don't. And it's cause it's kind of like you were saying, like, I just can't like, I drink like one can and I'm good. And then I kind of yeah. want, that water hydration yeah. going on. Yeah. 
but I'll tell you what though, I did. I, I bought. I found on Amazon. It was sixty bucks. It was an inline like under the sink filter system. Yeah. And uh, I installed that in the kitchen sink so that whenever you got cold water, you know, it's filtered. So you can just take it right out of the fucking sink instead of having to fill the Brita pitcher. Yeah, yeah we had that at one of our houses. <laughs> and so I was like, <laughs> after I installed it, I told him, I was like, hey, you know, just so you know, the 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 cold water in the sink is, uh, is you know, pure water. It's filtered. He was like, shit, okay, fuck, I might actually drink some more water because if it's easy as just filling my cup from the sink and I don't have to worry about the damn Brita filter, I'll drink it more. And I was like, that's my thought too. That's why I did it. <laughs> because that, well, that, that Brita pitcher was just a, a fucking, I hated it. I hate having to fucking fill it up every time I want to use it. You know, and it's well, like... <laughs> That's why we get the fridge with the water in the door. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I, I'm excited about that for the new house. Our new fridge is yeah. gonna have that. I'm like, yes. That means I can leave yeah. that filter right there. I don't have to move it with us. I don't have to undo it and redo yeah. the plumbing and yeah. bring it with us. It's like, nope. I can just get it out of the fridge. <laughs> yeah, we had the. We, it's funny. We went through the same cycle. So we went through the Brita filter. We had the pitcher, and then we also had the one with the spigot. So yeah. You had more water at a time. Uh, we used to save like the bigger water bottles like the one you were talking about and then yeah. fill them with the water from the Brita pitcher and then yep. keep bottles of water in the fridge and then I finally upgraded this to like the one you stick on the end of the the faucet yeah and and then I upgraded to the inline one and then um, then we finally you know moved up in the world and yeah. got an actual refrigerator yeah. with the filter well it's like it's... to me right when it comes to drinking water the perfect temperature for me is like right when the ice is almost all the way melted because that's when the water is at its coldest and to me there's nothing better than a than ice cold water and the only way to get that without ice and waiting is to just have refrigerated water <laughs> it's, it's nice. so it's like i fucking hated having to like make my drink and then like wait and I drink some. I, I can I I could polish off half this bottle and like, just right here, like <laughs> I I wish I could. I want to buy like a jug that's like this big, just massive, so that I don't ever have to refill it throughout the day. I can just drink on it. Well, yeah, all day. <laughs> that's why I have like my like liter and a half aluminum bottle. Like yeah, like this has been empty for fucking an hour now, and I just <laughs> I can't bring myself to get up and go refill. I'm thirsty as fuck, but I just uh, too much. Work. <laughs> well, and we're streaming, so well, yeah, that too. So we still have three more questions to try and pull out. Yeah, through. yeah. So, so sodas was you know like I said that's was our our biggest hit, and I feel like yeah, if I was making like the hundred fifty thousand a year, I'd probably just buy sodas. You know, I just, I'd stop fucking around going to Dollar General. Yeah, I would just you know when we go to Sam's Club, I just throw a couple cases on the cart. Boom. <laughs> You know, I'd still make conscious decisions, you know, to like buy them at Sam's Club. But yeah, yeah, I feel like I'd stop fucking around with Dollar General at that point. I'm already almost at the point, of, like you were saying, of just stopping soda, <laughs> just because one, it's expensive and it's a pain in the dick. To like every week, we got to look at the Dollar General sale and see which one's on sale this week. And yeah, all this hassle to like save ten dollars. Yeah. Uh, the other one. And this one, a lot of people don't really give me shit, but I've made comments on, is at what point do you only have newish clothes instead of the same old comfortable worn out ones? Because I have, like, my go-to rotation of, like, five t-shirts. Yeah. Some of them have... You know they're faded, or some of them have like uh, you know the strings come out on part of it or something, and I don't care. Like it's comfortable; it's not full of holes or anything. Yeah, know. yeah. But it's obviously worn. The collar's a little stretched out or something, you know. But they're my go-to comfortable shirts, and like it's not that I can't afford new ones. I just don't want to afford new ones. Yeah. That but fine again, line. Yeah, but again. It's kind of like the death situation, you know, where it's like, well, it's not broken. Why go buy new ones? Yeah. You know, 
But again, I feel like if I was making that 150000 you know, I wouldn't be like upgrading my wardrobe every year. But I feel like at that point, I'd be like, you know what? This shirt's getting a little worn. Let me just order a new one. Yeah. Like, versus now, I wait until that shirt disintegrates in the fucking washer before I buy a new <laughs> shirt. <laughs> yeah. And I, I don't know. What's, what's your standpoint on that? Uh, clothing. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely, I, I definitely think my, I definitely. I mean, if you look at my current shirt. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you look at mine. I'm, this is a shirt that we were given as students when I was going to UTI. Like, yeah, but yours <laughs> still looks nice. Mine's like a lot of the iron ons like peeled off. Yeah, there's no, a, I mean, there's a hole or two or four. And I literally wore this shirt to Walmart today. My grand, it's Walmart, not like it's fancy, but no, I mean, it's out I, in public today i definitely i would definitely have a more more of a variety in my wardrobe like pretty much all i wear is i have like four pairs of blue jeans like four pairs of khaki cargo shorts and a bunch of t-shirts and some button up like i would buy like some nicer clothes like i'd, I'd buy some khakis i'd buy some you know nicer button ups i'd buy you know i'd probably get like an actual the, nice we're not talking like, about upgrading suit. we're talking about like how often oh how play. often oh much more often yeah that was my point like it's yeah much i more own often. some nicer clothes yeah but my go-to ones are honestly my worn out ones yeah I know no, no, no. i'm yeah. going somewhere where i need to be a little bit more presentable like if i'm say like the kbl guy right i've met him once at a garage sale but if we were to like say go out to dinner you know, I'd wear a shirt that doesn't have fucking holes in it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I, w I would definitely buy buy clothes more often. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I feel like, you know, once it starts getting a little too faded, a little too wore out, I'd be like, you know what? Time to retire this thing. Yeah. Instead of, instead of like, oh, well, this will just be my lazing around the house shirt. It's like, nope, this is going in the garbage and I'm getting a new shirt. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, <laughs> in my case, I turn them into strop rags. But well, yeah. 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 But yeah, I feel like I would, I would at a, yeah, I guess just simply put, you know, much more frequent rate, I would upgrade my clothing. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't wait until they're literally falling apart <laughs> before I'm like, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and even then, like when I do find the upgrade shirts, you know, then I wait till I go to like Kohl's and look at the clearance rack, like during Black Friday, <laughs> try and find like... <laughs> the cheapest deal possible yeah yeah but that kind of ties into my size like i have to buy like three xlts yeah and those are like you know 40 50 dollars a shirt if you're trying to get something cool like a star wars shirt or something hey listen pro tip pro tip here amazon sells decent clothes dirt cheap like how much how much are blue jeans for you like thirty dollars, like thirty dollars. Yeah, okay. That's that's about for well, like one my pair. Off of Amazon too. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. I was gonna say, yeah, that's that's about right then. But like, shit, I'll go to like the 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 Levi's store, and it's like they want seventy dollars for a pair of jeans, and it's well, like well, motherfucker, yeah. dude. Well, I exclusively wear Wrangler. So. Yeah, Wrangler is the Walmart Levi. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it wasn't always a Walmart. No, thing, I do, I yeah. do, I do like Wrangler. I, I really do. Yeah. One, my, one of my all-time favorite pair of jeans. Who would I just recently yeah, had to I mean, throw away? Long they ripped. lasting. I mean, yeah, yeah. I just had to get rid of mine because they ripped. But yeah, they were my favorite pair of jeans. Man, they were, they were comfortable. They they're a little stiff when you first buy them, but you wear them for you know a couple of months. <laughs> wear them in. Oh, yeah. Well, it depends on which wrangle you're getting. But uh, I buy those. Have you tried any of the flex jeans that have like flexible material, like? in the entire jean not yes. just the waistband yeah mm -hmm. that was the mm -hmm. one yeah yeah wrangler makes those yeah too. yeah those were the ones man the the legs were like a little they weren't like super stretchy but they were a little stretchy yeah where you can squat down yeah the pants yeah and give. yeah man they those were fucking great yeah I love those so much that's that's what i exclusively wear is the wrangler flex fit or whatever the hell but, it's going uh, that's just the thing like i live in houston like i never like the only reason, the only time I ever wore jeans was when I was working in the office because <laughs> I had to. Like, 
<laughs> if I'm doing work, you know. I don't wear if I'm pants. doing yard work and things like that, I try and wear pants. <laughs> I'm wearing shorts. Exclusive. I only wear pants yeah. if I have to. It's too fucking hot to wear pants. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, I agree. But in the winter time, I wear pants a lot. And, and depending on what I'm doing. So, yeah, I, there's weird reasons that don't make any logical sense as to why I wear pants. But I do wear them pretty often but I still yeah. probably 80% of the time wear shorts uh, anyway the next one is at when, what point in your life are you going to go to the grocery store and just start throwing shit in the cart you're not comparing prices you're not like you go to the steaks you're not looking at which pack of steaks is cheaper you just grab a fucking steak and throw it in the cart uh, I'm, again I'm still sick Yeah. You know, I don't think that I think I think that's that's one of the main reasons why I chose that number is so that I can have the freedom <laughs> to do that. Yeah. So you want to freedom, you know, to do all these things really. I want to buy sews whenever I want, I want to buy clothes when they are wore yeah. out. I wanna just yeah. throw things in the cart. Yeah, that's like, cush. That's cush to me. Yeah. yeah. You know. But it, I was just saying it's I wonder how much of that are you thinking about now? to the grocery store like say oh. you're getting say you're getting just chicken breast right like boneless chicken breast are you looking for the cheapest one per package or are you just grabbing one? Oh, i'm i'm looking for i'm looking for the cheapest one well not necessarily i'm looking for the cheapest best looking one well yeah right uh i mean with chicken breast there's not a lot to yeah. it but if you're talking about like a brisket, yeah. I'm not yeah. just finding the cheapest one. I'm finding the one with the right amount of marbling. And, yeah. You know. um, but also, I mean, things like, say, you know, Cheez-Its. Like, I'll typically buy, like, the great value brand of Cheez-Its versus name brand Cheez-Its. And, you know, little things like that. Like, we buy the store brand milk instead of board and milk. We, you know, uh, Every little thing. Even today, we went to buy creamer, right? Coffee creamer. Yeah. Just went to the store to buy coffee creamer. And I noticed I normally get the Italian sweet cream made by, uh, wherever it is, not international, whatever the other one yeah, is. Yeah, coffee made or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So we normally buy that one. But I noticed international brand of a different flavor that isn't my go-to flavor was like a dollar fifty cheaper per container. Mm -hmm. So I literally bought my second best option of flavor because it was a dollar fifty cheaper per bottle. Right. And it's like little things like that where it's not that I can't afford it. I just always look at every dollar saved as a dollar I can spend somewhere else. Yeah. And I almost to a certain extent I can't imagine myself ever not making that decision. And I even question as I say you know, hundred fifty thousand dollars. I'm not gonna make those decisions. I'm just gonna buy the creamer I want. But I honestly don't know. I don't know if that subconscious part of me is ever gonna go away. Where I'm like, yeah, I'm making one hundred fifty thousand dollars, but that's three more dollars I could save right there to spend on something else. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like I still don't know. I, I guess I won't honestly know until I get to that point. If I'll ever just buy the creamer i want versus the creamer that's cheaper yeah no i mean i'm already kind of making that it, it's really situational for me like I'll, I'll give you an example i love to cook as as you know and i'm sure a lot of the people listening or watching know um <laughs> specifically this isn't the only instance but this is definitely one of them specifically butter very particular about the butter that i buy and when i do buy butter i typically buy two kinds i'll buy like are you talking about butter butter or margarine i never buy margarine ever okay um and that's just me being hoity toity chef whatever i believe that yeah. just i believe that butter is better than margarine. i mean it is but it depends on what you're cooking with it but, yeah. i use butter to cook for anything i use butter to put it on my toast i don't use margarine for well, anything I don't buy yeah, but that's I'm saying there's certain things that you won't 
really taste like if I'm making stove top, I'm not going to really notice the difference of whether I use butter or margarine. Sure. Right. I, I, I can agree with that. But hear me out. When I buy butter, I buy two different kinds. I'll buy like the four pack of like the Kroger brand unsalted butter. Right. That's yeah. on the cheap side. And I'll also buy like a two or four pack of like uh, Kerrygold, like the, the premium Irish, you know, yeah. butter. And uh, it's like the, the Kroger brand butter. That's for like the fucking, that's for the hamburger helper. That's for the fucking, yeah. you know, the, the, the basic shit. The things but, you're not going to taste. It. Right. But when I'm cooking and I'm cooking, I'm doing my chef thing. I got to have that good butter, you know? <laughs> And I, I don't mind sacrificing the extra couple of dollars to buy the nice shit. <laughs> See, we're the same with the butter discussion, but in just two different manners. We buy the, like, churn-style margarine, where it's nice and creamy and still semi-flavorful. Mm -hmm. And we use that for things like you were saying. Like, it's just going to be blended in. It's just there as, a, as another random ingredient, not as a flavor factor yeah and then we keep we usually buy that like spreadable butter that like lando lakes comes in a little like yeah red top container mm -hmm. so we'll buy that for like putting like yours on like put it on toast or rolls or something like that that you're gonna actually taste it in or like we recently got a bread machine so like we'll buy sticks of actual butter if we want we're making bread yeah because we want the bread to be as flavorful as possible no i mean i <sighs> But you, I'm definitely not against margarine. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I kind of am. I kind of am uh, because uh, you you can call bullshit or not, but I I can I, I almost guarantee you I can tell the difference. Doesn't matter what you put it in, I can tell the difference. I don't know. I don't think you're tasting the difference in stovetop, man. Maybe it's placebo, but I, I'm I'm convinced. <laughs> I'm I'm convinced we're, that we're gonna, that that, we're gonna to add that to our food stream one day whenever we do the the weird taste testing. Yeah, we're gonna like we're gonna split a stovetop oh. container into two bowls. Speaking of which, <laughs> speaking of which, I have a confession to make. Did you already eat it? I can't. I you know I got some marmite and I've already tried it. Wow. I will not share uh, my thoughts on it yet. But I have tried. I can't it. believe you couldn't wait already. I couldn't. I couldn't, man. I, don't I was even know excited. Why you bought it already. I was excited about it, man, because I've been wanting to try it for a really, really, really long time, and yeah, I just couldn't. Now I we're couldn't. just gonna have to find something new then, because it's supposed to be, you know, first live reactions on the stream. Nah, well, we'll, we'll be good. We'll be fine. All right. Well, anyway, let's wrap it up with the final question. So all those yeah. previously were for kind of small things, you know, when are you buying? full price sodas when are you upgrading how often are you upgrading your clothes and when are you just throwing whatever you want in the cart you know like in your case when are you only buying the good butter instead of Kroger butter you know things like that mm -hmm. uh, the bigger one and this is the one that I, I really don't know how much money I would need to make to swallow this price jump is when it comes to buying a car because currently I'm in a $10,000 used SUV. Started off with under 50,000 miles. Third row seating, nice quality, nothing wrong with it. You know, like as mint condition as you can get for a couple year old car when we got it for $10,000. Now granted, I'd love to be in some like $100,000 King Ranch Edition pickup truck. Yeah. But one comes in the cost, the initial cost of said truck. And then there's the like quadruple gas prices, quadruple tire prices. Like yeah. the maintenance goes through the roof compared to my, you know, you're talking a $150 oil change that I have to try and get done when it's needed instead of when my oil light comes on. Yeah. I mean, more money, yeah. more expenses. Yeah. So it's like, at what point are you buying the good new car bells and whistles edition much higher maintenance vehicle versus the more budget friendly all around vehicle you know i think for me keeping it at 175,000 a year i 
probably wouldn't be the one to go out and buy like you know the top of the line all the bells and whistles brand new off the truck you know f-150 but i would buy something brand new instead of shopping around for the best deal on a used car i would go to a dealership and i'd buy something brand new off the lot it doesn't necessarily have to have all the bells and whistles yeah i might throw a couple of upgrades in it that i might well, want I mean, you know but bells and whistles are one thing like those are those are more i was more looking at the maintenance too i mean because you could take a thirty thousand dollar car and all the whistles are gonna make it 35 yeah yeah so, I, mean, I mean that's not a big difference the big difference is when you're you know going from like your standard f-150 to the king ranch edition extended cab pre-lifted you know two thousand uh, dollars for a set of tires <laughs> fucking truck yeah i mean no i don't i don't think i would go that big uh if if i if if i felt like that was a necessity for me uh then yeah i might have to up my price my my number a little bit but i don't i i, I don't but at the same time i mean you could also just budget for that too yeah yeah, true. I feel like with both of our budgets, 150, 175,000, if we really wanted that big bad truck, oh, yeah. we could do it. Yeah. We would just have to make some adjustments elsewhere. Yeah. You know, yeah, absolutely. We'd, I, we'd have to go back to holding our clothes and buying off brand butter for a couple of years. Yeah, but to, <laughs> at least at least to me, I don't see as much of a value in that, right? Like, I, I would get more value out of. You know, buying nicer clothes, buying better ingredients, you know, getting what I want at the grocery store, you know, getting my oil changes on time. So, no, I don't think I would. I, I definitely, I, I don't think I would buy a used car again. I would probably buy a new. Yeah. Um, but and I don't, it, it I don't was, think I would go crazy with it. I really don't. I don't need all of that. And that's kind of what I meant. I mean, literally, the title of the question was, "When do you buy more car than what you need?" Oh yeah, and I think we're both on the same page. We're like, I don't think either of us would buy more car than what we need. No, but... unless, unless I had, unless I just so happened to have that money. You know, like yeah. I said, if if my if my budget was bumped up to maybe two hundred thousand a year, then yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> you know, but staying. But again, the whole point of this is, you know, you're supposed to stay modest about it, right? So, and so you know, that might be one of those things that a. I agree with you. Like, I would probably stop buying used cars at that point. I would still ride my car until it's yep mm -hmm. needs to be replaced per se, or it's just really lived its life. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Like, like my goal with my current car is to hit two hundred thousand miles. Yeah. Like, I want to see if I can make it to two hundred thousand before I need to replace it. I'm at like a hundred and ten right now. Yeah. So I think I would still stick with that rule of thumb, trying to make it last two hundred thousand, because that's when you really start seeing problems. Yeah, that's when like you need a whole new damn transmission and shit, and you're, you know, just normal wear and tear of rust and salt on the road starts wearing things down nowadays. Yeah, where I feel like I would still aim to be like every two hundred thousand miles get a new car. But I feel like instead of like now, I go and try and find a used one with like 50,000 miles or less, I would just go and get a new one. Yeah. <clears throat> but I would still, I feel like I would still look for a decent budget. You know, yeah. I'm still yeah. not going to go crazy. I'm not going to get a, you know, Lexus SUV. Right. I'm not buying a, a fucking Mercedes. You know, what, what's, what's the, what's the one that's like the expensive SUV? The, the G-Wagon. No, it's like a the UK brand, I think, right? There's, uh, I mean, I know Mercedes sells a G wagon that's like fucking five hundred thousand dollars. No, I'm not talking about stupid crazy. I'm talking about the ones that like a lot of people have. Oh, um, God, I want to say it's a UK brand. Uh, yeah, pretty sure. Mm. UK brand SUV that's popular uh, here. What is it called? Land Rover. Land Rover. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Land Rover. Yeah, Pretty those sure are that's nice. UK, isn't it? Those are nice. Yeah, yeah. Those. That's the UK. Yeah, those are nice. Uh, yeah. Like, and they're expensive. 
Yeah. <laughs> like, very so expensive. It's like, so it's like, I still don't think I'm going to go buy a mm. brand new Land Rover off the mm. lot. But I probably buy a nice, you know, brand new Mitsubishi or, you know, whatever is within the budget. Yeah. What does a brand new Land Rover cost? Uh, it depends. I've seen them go from like two to three hundred thousand. Sometimes see. less. I mean, uh, a lot of times less, actually. I'm trying to see just like on a dealership. Land Rover Brand USA. Defender 10. Uh, oh, well, oh. <laughs> 70,000 pounds, which is what? 70 to... That's 2014 Raptor. The 2014 Raptor, that was the one where they had the exhaust tuned up and they sounded really nice. Yeah, I do like those Raptors. Let's see. Pounds to dollars. 80,000. Huh, that's not too bad. Yeah, it's still a $97,000 SUV. Yeah, $100,000 car. Yeah. So, yeah, as much as I think Land Rovers are cool, too, I don't think I'd be one of those cool kids. I think I'd still just buy, like, a $50,000 SUV and call yeah, it a day. Yeah, I considered, um, I considered getting rid of the Honda and, and buying, a uh, like, an old Ranger. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted a truck that bad. And I really, I really do like the Rangers, but it, I don't know. I was like, I was looking at Rangers and I wanted it, to me, it was essential that it had power locks and windows, which those are kind of rare because uh, yeah. they only, they only produced them with power windows and locks for like a couple of years before they stopped making them all together. <laughs> so one, they were hard to find. And two, I was like, eh, it's just, that's a little more money than I wanted to spend on a fucking beat up old Ranger. You know? Yeah. The Tahoe's aren't cheap either. They're yeah. Starting out at 54,000 yeah. for a base model. Yeah. And I, I don't, I, I, I'll also say, I don't think I'd ever, I'd ever buy like a base model car ever again either. Yeah. I mean, I'm already at that point. Yeah. But. Yeah. Though I do say one funny thing to end the stream on when it comes to car purchases. I think me and the wife are both at the point that we're not going to buy heated seats ever again. No. If anything, I'm buying cool cool seats. They do that now, and it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, because while we love the heated seats in the wintertime, I swear the seats are hotter in the summertime because of it. <laughs> like, I swear it's like the metal or whatever in there that gets heated up. <laughs> absorbs the sunlight or something uh, as, as and absorbs your body heat. that is i can tell you 110 percent that is placebo 110 i don't know man i don't know i man. can tell you i could... swear we have been we are constantly checking to see if we've accidentally <laughs> switched the switch on i can tell you because that was one of my specialties at the that was one of the things that was, you know, part of my job as a mechanic was, you know, taking apart seats and putting on new covers and shit like that. And so I got to see how all of those work. And uh, no, it's not. I promise. <laughs> like it feels just downright hot all the goddamn time. And it, we've never felt. I can get my other SUV and feel just fine. And my other SUV has really shitty air conditioning, but my back and my ass doesn't feel hot when I'm in the. the uh, what, what, kind, what, kind of, what kind of material are you sitting on? It's cloth on both. Interesting. I don't know, man, but I can tell you. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I still think we're convinced that we're just going to, even if it is placebo, at least it'll give us peace of mind that we're not <laughs> constantly thinking that the damn switch <laughs> is turned on. That's fair. <laughs> yeah it's, it's the fun thing we're so happy it was our first car to have heated seats we're like oh this is amazing no it makes us paranoid you know what it's, you know what it's really great for though keeping your pizza warm <laughs> it's great for that okay but anyway that's gonna do it for our stream tonight it's gonna do it for episode 23 i hope y'all enjoyed it Derek, it's nice to see you chiming in there hope your drive was safe I mean, you guys know the drill at this point, right? Follow us on YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Use your Bezos bucks here. Throw us a Prime sub on the Twitch if you're feeling generous. Uh, check us out on our website. Uh, join us in Discord. Uh, come hang out with us. Game with us. 
Um, I've been playing a lot of Valorant lately. Goats playing Call of Duty. So if you play either one of those, let us know. We'll definitely and Eve. The game. And Eve, yeah. At least I uh, believe. I'm I'm playing a bunch of different games right now. I'm playing <laughs> Valorant. I'm playing Starfield. I'm playing Lies of P. I'm playing Baldur's Gate. I'm playing uh, just a bunch of stuff right now. Um, so yeah, come and join us. Um, other than that, any closing notes before we end it? Uh, the only thing I'd say is um, I'm not going to make any promises, but I am aiming to make some more first impression gameplay videos on YouTube this weekend. So people look out for those as well. Yeah, I've been, I've been slacking on that. I'm gonna try and put some out. And other I'm gonna, than that, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna start uh, probably. Probably this weekend, I'm gonna start putting together a uh, a um, a scene in the in the the streaming software for recording the you know monthly gaming news episodes. So we'll be getting started on those here pretty soon. Uh, so yeah, uh, with that being said, I hope everyone has a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow nope. for a ghost. Stream. Wait, you're right. Dang. Yeah. Yep. Tomorrow for Ghost Stream. Make sure you tune in on Monday for Scriv's wonderful wrestling streams. It's always it's always a great time being in there. Um, and we'll, I was uh, mostly there on Monday. Yeah, I'm. I'm I, I pulled up the stream like half an hour early. And yeah, forgot about it. Yeah, yeah. I typically am either sitting in Discord with him or you know watching it like that. Yeah, make sure you tune in for that, and I hope uh, everyone has a fantastic night. Yep, we'll see you all tomorrow and next week. Thank you.